Worf claims a door is jammed. Parthus is a green vegetable with fleshy roots. And Yuda must have an amazing skincare regimen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh <laughs> Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. My name is hey. Ryan T. Husk. And today we are joined by Lisa Wilcox. We're very fortunate. How are you today, Lisa? I'm doing excellent. How about you guys? So good to have you. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> pretty really, good. really is. Uh, one of the yeah. great joys of this show is getting to meet people like yourself that the fans for decades have said, remember this character? What about your, your trivia questions, your memories, your lessons that people point out later on in life? You know, and then so good to revisit you. How How's life? What's up with you? <laughs> life is great. <laughs> life is busy. Um, I left acting for a very long time, raising my children and whatnot, and got back into acting about, oh, about four or five years ago. Then, of course, we had the pandemic. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, it's been great. I've been like working like nonstop, honestly. So I'm very, very happy. Well, lots of film. Wow. Also, everybody, very quickly, do not forget Creation Entertainment, uh, March 8th through 10th, come early, March 7th through 10th in Burlingame, right next to the San Francisco airport, is Trek Tour, Trek to San Francisco. It's an amazing convention. Go to creationent.com. We're going to be there, that's for sure, as will dozens of Star Trek <laughs> yes, celebrities. <sir. laughs> Go to creationent.com for tickets, hotel, and more information. We will see you there. Srock, did you love this episode? I did. This was a lot of episode for me. There was a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I had to really pay attention because they were introducing so many new concepts for me. I had to follow. This wasn't really, you know, the main ship uh, characters on the ship kind of having an, an adventure. This was more about your story, uh, Lisa, and, and also the, the story of this of this you know, Trelesta and the uh, Akamarians. And so I had to really sit down and like, and I like <laughs> this kind of stuff because it's it's world building. And I, I do enjoy uh, a good set of world building ideas. Excellent. Yeah, it was quite a story. And um, I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually a property on the Star Trek Next Gen Monopoly board. What? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, There's yeah, trivia all... for us. Think of the hundreds of guest stars that were on Next Generation, right? So believe yes. me, it was quite quite an honor to be a property on, on the board. Oh gosh! Wow. So yeah, how I mean, fitting I was too, my mom. because I would say how fitting because in this episode you were kind of property of yes. uh, the main <laughs> lady, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the sovereign. Right. We got, so was. hey, <laughs> your property. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying to my mom, you know, well, I don't have a star on Hollywood Boulevard, but I'm on the next gen Monopoly board. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's really cool. We got to find that. Everybody at home, find that for us and post it somewhere <laughs> like in our group or in the comments. Give us a link to it. Uh, yeah, Lisa, and it's so cool. I'm in the booklet and everything that tells the whole story. And anyway, wow. it's pretty neat. That's oh, incredible. That's uh <laughs> So your story, as everybody's, is always a little bit different. Everybody's got some kind of different story as to how they uh, auditioned their first impressions when they came on the show. Do you remember anything that really stood out the first time you came on the show? Were you wowed? Were you always a Star Trek fan? Or were you like, hey, it's just another job. These lines look cool. Let me nail it and get on to the next one. Uh, no, I've always watched Star Trek, even the, the original. I grew up with Star Trek, so uh, as many of us did. And so it was quite, uh, I was quite thrilled. Um, we filmed at Paramount Studios, which is, in my opinion, the most beautiful studio uh, I've, in the world. It's just absolutely gorgeous and full of, you know, history and all that. So to be on that lot was pretty, pretty special, definitely. And I was incredibly impressed with the sound stage sound stages i should say i mean they literally build a planet <laughs> i mean you know yes. it, it, it's it's so it's absolutely phenomenal the meticulous uh attention to detail 
is just incredible, which hence it's, you know, huge success, I think. Um, you know, even the gown, I, the dress I'm wearing that was custom made, the jewelry, there's so much thought put into, you know, how I have the, you know, the, 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 you know, the tattoo here and the hair. I mean, just detail, detail, detail. So pretty, pretty uh, special experience. I want to compliment you <clears throat> um, on the performance that you gave in the scene with Riker, where you are kind of sent to his quarters to entertain him. And <laughs> I really enjoyed your performance there. I felt that you were playing this character really well with the reservations you had inside, with the kind of emotionless uh, persona that you were giving off and, and that you discussed in the scene. But, um, you know, it was the first time we really see Riker not taking the easy way and jumping on something that's in front of him. He actually <laughs> made, he actually <laughs> fought with a different part of his brain. <laughs> but I, that's what was special about it to me. It's like, oh, okay, this guy actually, you know, it, it, you, you brought out a certain, um, characteristic in Riker that we we that I as the audience felt was great um can you tell me a little bit about working with Mr. Jonathan Frakes uh and and how your your chemistry was um you know so tangible on, on screen uh well thank you Glenn for the the compliment um Utah was a very uh layered character needless to say so it was certainly, um, so I'm glad my objective to make it believable and that there's just levels and levels going on with this woman. Um, and, uh, Jonathan, we had, we had a great time. Uh, he's very tall. He's very tall. And, and I'm like five, four. I think back then I was five, five, actually. Now I'm five, four. <laughs> As time travels, right, guys? Um, so they had to put, so when we, we get to ki we kiss, right? And they had to put me on an apple box. <laughs> so, Half so, apple, so, quarter know, apple, Jonathan. full apple. Yeah. Uh, it might have been a full apple, I think. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just a foot, a foot and a half, yeah. Um, so, uh, but we, we hit it off immediately. Um and there was chemistry. And also what you said about Riker's care about Riker, you know, I really see it as he was falling in love with me. There was something he, you know, we definitely were falling in love with each other, which makes the end so much more tragic, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So whenever I do see him at a convention, he always goes, he always says, ah, Utah, Harthas a la Utah. <laughs> <laughs> So he has never forgotten our uh, the experience, you know, or that episode. So that's pretty cool. Um, we did have something kind of happen on set, though, when we we're he's eating my parthus, right? So yeah. it's like the green jello thing, okay? And he's eating, it and the director goes, "What?" And we're like, "What?" Well, the green dye food coloring they used on the jello was staining his teeth. So we had to stop <laughs> filming for like an hour for them to get this green stuff off of his beautiful teeth. We were not <laughs> anyway. And I have a feeling someone's head rolled that day. Whoever made that part of this anyway. So, uh, so I, I, I noticed how he was picking at it with his fork. Yes. <laughs> it's, the way he did it was it's not the way you pick at something you really like or you want to eat that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he learned his lesson he learned his lesson yeah wow so, that's funny uh, and these things happen on you know things happen on set it's just part of the part yeah. of the deal you of know course. Yeah. Well, we can't so, have green teeth walking around so that no, you know, that wouldn't be no. yeah <laughs> i think they had to use peroxide eventually anyway it oh, was quite a ordeal sounds terrible <laughs> i was so. yeah yeah. yeah. What Plus, was some of the, you don't want to be staining the star's teeth, okay? No. <laughs> Plus, there was a moment in the scene with you where uh, at the end of the scene, Riker gives this big, slow smile. Like it starts off kind of a smirk and then it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. And that is 
an actual meme. It's like a GIF that people use all over the internet. If you go on like Twitter or Facebook and you just go into GIFs and you do Riker, one of the very first things you'll always see is that one, but it's in slow motion. So he's like, oh, oh, and it's just, I love it. and as I'm watching the scene, I'm like, this looks like it's going to be that scene. Like you recognize the framing. So I'm like oh, waiting for it with head. bated breath. And I'm like trying to listen to what you are saying to deliver to him to get that smile. And you're just mesmerizing him is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, I am definitely going to look up that GIF. Oh my goodness! Yes, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought you were really great in this episode because you were playing this um, conflicted person that had a little. It felt came across as reserved or shy, and you know, um, there's so much going on inside of you that we later learn is you know your objective in life and what you basically, you know, being trained to be an assassin essentially right here yeah. um and so but we don't know that and we know that you have this kind of the servant thing is what they really gave us an entryway into so i really thought that was dynamic and i wanted to ask you because this is what i thought of when i was watching your performance i thought of one of my favorite movies which is blade runner the mm -hmm. original blade runner with harrison ford and in that film, there was a character named Rachel, played by an actress named Sean Young, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh, I yeah. The film very, very well. Yes. Definitely an element of Rachel in Utah. Absolutely. I, I felt that. I felt even almost the hair, the <laughs> hair design was not the same, but similar. And the performance of just this kind of stoic, I can't really read what's going on. I, I really there, thought there were, you know, remnants of that uh, performance from Blade Runner in this character, which I which I love, by the way. So another compliment for you, Lisa. Wow, thank you. I never it never um, occurred to me. So thank you. That's a huge compliment. You know, because oh, Rachel is just such. a fascinating character in Blade Runner. Oh, she's just intriguing, you know? Iconic. Yes. Speaking yes. of intriguing, yeah. check this out. So here's the, uh, here it is right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love it. That's great. Um, that is great. Also, oh, everybody at home, here's a bit of trivia for you. Do you know that Lisa is currently working with somebody that appeared in Star Trek Picard season three. What? How? How's that what? possible? Well, if you follow the Lisa Wilcox, you would know. Look at this. Uh, with Tiffany Shepes, who played Doctor Oak, I believe, in Star Trek Picard. I believe she's married to Sean Tretta, if I remember correctly. And so, can you tell us what this is? Oh, this is called. This is a totally campy horror film uh, called Slasher Size. And it, takes <laughs> and, and it takes place in the 80s. And there's a killer on the loose killing people at gyms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, we had so, we, you, I'm so happy. I haven't even put up the pictures I have for that because we just filmed it friday <laughs> um so anyway and we're the um we're the board we're no nonsense you know final girls kind of thing so we we take care of the situation no worries everybody the world is now safe <laughs> <laughs> so yeah then we had a good time <laughs> amazing I, I i wanted to ask you also lisa you mentioned that you walked away from acting and I mean, you started really, we, we saw your credits go back, you know, to the eighties. And, um, so to be putting in all that work and all that time. And I, I just wanted for the audience to understand, you know, the decision that you made to walk away from it to, as you say, ra raising children and, um, how was that experience for you? Um, either getting into another profession or not working at all, um, focusing on family. I mean, what, what, what was that like for you? It was, it was tough because I kind of left at sort of at the top of, at the, 
you know, kind of the very beginning top of my career. Um, but I got married and I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be a room mom. And once the, I had two boys and but what, and I remember I did, um, in Vancouver, went to Vancouver for a few months to do, uh, the TV series, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And my young, my eldest, he was young enough, you know, we could, I, I could go around places with my family, you know what I mean? But once I started school, mm, no, I, I just didn't want to do that. I wasn't going to, I wanted to be home. And my husband at the time, um, he was doing well in his profession. So, um, I got to be, uh, you know, a housewife basically. So, which was a, you know, a, a great thing. Um, but of course I always miss acting. Um, so I was really excited to win an opportunity. And I did corporate world for like five years when kids were older. Um, but I decided, you know what, my passion is acting. So mm -hmm. let's do that. And let's be brave. <laughs> okay. Mm. And yeah. fortunately, the the uh you know producers and writers and all that it, welcome arms so i you know make my living as a full time actress so uh mm -hmm. knock on wood i'm very grateful for for that that's incredible and, and at an older now at an older age you know not obviously not the ingenue anymore um i'm getting to play really fun evil people evil politicians evil queens you know all that which is so much fun oh my gosh it's so much fun to sink my hands into those kind of roles mm -hmm. well we only have you for a couple yeah. more minutes uh lisa first of all i just want to say your performance uh as luta is very impressive because you're you're playing an alien right which <laughs> feels so nebulous you're playing an alien but I'm sure if you were to ask a director, okay, or a writer, so how do these aliens, they'd be like, I, I don't know, just kind of like humans, I guess, but with stuff on their face and nefarious. <laughs> so it's kind of this confusing thing of like, well, am I acting like an alien? Am I acting <laughs> like a human? I have a thing on my head and another thing, and I don't know what's going on. But but you, you're clearly able to shine human motives and human emotions through it, which is what makes you know this performance so amazing but uh i think i said luta it's utah uh utah. but moving forward since we only have you a minute or two here can you please tell everybody you're you're working constantly what where can they find you what are the the newest projects to look out for well there's five maybe six things streaming right now and you can look on hulu uh prime um, you know, all of them, uh, Amazon prime, you know, I, uh, I'm very excited about one called, um, don't suck. And I worked <laughs> with Jamie Kennedy, the comedian, Jamie Kennedy and, uh, Matt Riff to Matt Riff. Uh, so, what a great time. I was so nervous to work with, I mean, Jamie, a professional comedian. I was so nervous because then the director who I've known for a long time, he said, so we're going to do the script, but also Jamie's want to do some improv, which I anticipated. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to improv. Jamie Kennedy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I was, so I'm on set and I'm dressed and all this. And I'm, <laughs> I'm literally like so nervous. I'm shaking. And Jamie goes, are you cold? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> Can we get Lisa a jacket? You know? <laughs> Oh, anyway, so after we finished filming and everything, I told him, you know what? I was shaking because I was so nervous. He's like, it's just little old me, Lisa. It's just Jamie. This and that. Anyway, he was totally down to earth, totally, totally adorable. Um, so that's playing also something called um, Murder Anyone, where I won uh, Best Supporting Actress, actually, at a festival in Hollywood. Uh, Murder Anyone. Um, also a movie called Mystery Spot. Uh, big lead role. Very proud of that character. Mm -hmm. um, the Black Mass. I, the Black Mass. Black Mass. Yes, that's out now. Uh, and that was actually at the Cannes Film Festival. Um, so yeah, there's lots of lots of stuff out there. <laughs> and that's amazing. More to come. I will tell you. Now I know we have. Do we have two more minutes? Can I tell a quick story? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I have to tell you, Patrick Stewart, Picard. So. Um, a few years later, I'm sadly getting a divorce and whatnot. I'm looking for a house to rent. 
And I found this adorable Spanish bungalow in Burbank. And the realtor, my realtor is talking to the other realtor and put it together that I'm Utah from Star Trek because this house, this little bungalow is where <laughs> is where he was, Patrick was living with his fiance, Wendy, in this house. They were living in her house while they were building their palatial mansion in Pacific Palisades, right? So, so anyway, I get the house. A lot of people want the house. I get the house. And uh, Patrick and his wife drive up in a, uh, he's being driven in a white van because he was in Han Anaheim doing an autograph show. Went up and he gets out. Lisa, how are you, darling? <laughs> la, 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 right? Oh, it was so cool. And so, so they're showing me the ins and outs of the house and, and whatnot. And it was so funny because his, his <laughs> fiance is like, Patrick, you need to fix this gate. You forgot to fix the gate. Or what? <laughs> it was just, it was so real. It was so surreal, really. Um, anyway, it was, it was great. And then I move in and I'm kind of like, I'm in the bedroom looking at this, you know, I'm going to sleep going, Patrick Stewart stared at the ceiling. Sure. you know Locked he did <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so that's my fun little story <laughs> wow oh, that's great mm -hmm. well <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure you've seen each other or the other uh, next generation cast since you know at conventions and things of that nature yes um, since, since the recording of this right so you always yes. get a chance to kind of uh, reconnect you mentioned uh, Jonathan Frakes uh, mentioning the Parthas. <laughs> That's he, whenever he sees me, he's like, Ala Utah. Parthas Ala Utah. <laughs> Ala Utah. <laughs> and he laughs and we laugh and whatnot. Wow. So, what, what a great cast. What a great cast. It was just, it was an honor. So, fun group. And thank you. Thank you for enjoying the episode, The Vengeance Factor. Great title. Thank you, uh, Lisa. Thank we you. really appreciate you squeezing. A little bit of time in your extremely busy schedule. Uh, you're constantly working, and we really appreciate it. So, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you. I know I've got I had three movies back to back. I just did one of them, so that's one wow. of four, but three more like back to back, like home a day, leave the next day. So, I'm getting oh, wow. my memorization brain in gear. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you work a okay. lot, it means you're good at what you do. So, yep. I'm Oh. That's the confirmation. Um, <laughs> Thank you. We're going to second mm -hmm. that as well from from what we saw in this episode. You did a fantastic job, Lisa. We we really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you guys very very much. All right, Thanks and everybody, having... thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Everybody at home, stick around. We're going to come right back on the seventh rule. <laughs> 